Hey guys, what do you call an angry patty? A crabby patty. <laughs> A crabby <laughs> patty. <laughs> Alrighty guys, <laughs> welcome back to more Tales of Vesperia. We are here to make our way to Pharaoh's Craig, Crag, whatever you call it. So we were supposed to do this several episodes ago, but after we got Baal, I couldn't help but just go around the world collecting and finishing side quests, fighting new enemies, collecting materials, new items, you know, farming arts, fighting gigantos. Since we've done all of what we can so far, what we're going to do is finally be moving on forward to where we need to go. So let's do it. We're finally done with side quests. So this is where Pharaoh is? Not. There's actually several more side quests that I think open up like soon after this next story event. <laughs> Should be. I wasn't able to see him when we came to the desert, but I think this is where we can meet him. I hope nothing bad will happen. What if he suddenly attacks us? I can't make any guarantees. I don't think we'll have a say in the matter. That just means we need to do our best so nothing bad happens. Carol, are you okay? No, I'm not okay. I should go. Pharaoh sure did pick a bleak place to live in, don't you think? They say this area used to be covered in lush greenery. Why did it turn into this rocky desert? Hmm, I don't know that much. Air? Disturbances? Hmm, I wonder what kind of forest could cause this to go from green to uh, deserted, apocalyptic style. Like I hate, I hate deserted desert areas. Just in like video games, because it's like if the whole game is about the apocalypse and it it's all looks barren and it's just so boring. It's just so boring to look at. Estelle, are you really going to meet him, even though you could be killed? Yes. I've already made peace with this decision. Rita, you've been acting a little funny ever since hearing Judy's story on the ship. Do you have a problem with meeting Pharaoh? I just think it'll be hard on her to hear what he has to say. But it's too late to turn back now. We've come this far, after all. All right. So I want to give a special shout out to the stream chat for helping me on the previous couple of episodes with the uh, the made mini game, because that was really just, re really just ridiculous. And I had a, I had a pen and paper, of course, so that helped. But it also helped to have the stream chat <laughs> remembering certain things I forgot. So that was definitely. Shout out to stream chat for being uh, clutch the VIPs of the past previous uh, mini games we did with the The cafeteria or the, the bar mini game that was really nice Anyway, here we go. I just want to say Before we start off this episode any further this game has shipped 500,000 copies and I really hope Namco Bandai seriously considers remastering some older you know, tells games like Abyss or, you know, Abyss already had the 3DS version, but I would like to have that on a console again. And I would also like to have Legendia remastered. I, I want to see like all these older games, like we, we didn't even get over here, like Rebirth or Destiny 2. Oh, uh, just, uh, what's the other one? What's the other ones? Not Innoc Innocence is good. Innocence R I would like to see. And it's just all the other Tales games we never got, like Radiant Mythology 2, 3, that would be pretty cool. Or just a brand new Radiant Mythology, because Tales games are still pretty hot. I think that would be pretty cool. And you may be saying, oh wait, you said 500,000 copies of the game shipped? Shipped? Here's the thing, that's still good as money to them, because when they ship out, 
the copies of the games, the retailers buy the copies of the games, essentially. So sales data to Namco Bandai are basically irrelevant because it's like, yo, we shipped 500,000 copies. We, we shipped half a million copies of a fucking 10 year old ass game that we barely had to put any effort into porting. So <laughs> yeah, good job, Namco. Let me get, let me get that Tales of Legendia remaster, remake, make that game more playable for me. <laughs> well, he doesn't seem to be here. Maybe he's off somewhere taking a nap. Pharaoh, you're here, aren't you? No. <laughs> I am not here. Ah! Carol, chill, bro. Chill. Insipid poison. You appear before me at last. So you are here. Is that how you greet all your guests, Pharaoh? By calling them names? For what reason have you come to me? Surely you are aware that I could end your existence with a mere thought. <laughs> Damn, Pharaoh, that's kind of hardcore, bro. He said, surely you are aware that I could end your existence with a mere thought. He can just think you away and you die. <laughs> I'm going to think your ass away. <laughs> you talk pretty big, don't you? Well, if you really want to fight, I'd hate to disappoint you. Yuri, no! Everyone, please wait! Y'all need to chill. Estelle! <laughs> hey, Yuri, go pick up your goddamn sheath, all right, man? Put that, put that sword away. Pharaoh, please hear what I have to say. Does death hold no fear for you, little one? For you gaze now into the mouth of death itself. I am afraid, but I'm even more afraid of dying without knowing who I really am. Bellius told me I needed to meet you to learn about my destiny. I have to know just what that destiny is. I understand that I am a threat to the Entelikea, but you said that I am a poison to this world. What is this power I have? Just who is the child of the full moon? If it is true that my existence cannot be tolerated, then it's okay if I have to die. But I at least deserve to know why it is I have to die. Please tell me, I beg of you. There was a time when this was a verdant land, sheltered by the blessing of an air crene. So there was an air crene here. But what happened? Why did it change? What you see are the results of too much air and its aftermath. Too much air. Oh boy. As to why the air ran rampant, the answer lies with the poison brought by the Child of the Full Moon. Huh? The power of the Child of the Full Moon stimulates the air crane more than any Blastia. Huh? Huh? Nani? Blastia convert air into energy by way of a formula. So if Estelle can use her healing arts without the aid of any Blastia, she must possess a formula in her very being that lets her convert air into energy. Huh. So I, like when I first played the game, I never realized it, but you know, all those, you know, sequences that happened early in the game with the Blastia going out of control, it, it all makes sense now. Like when we were going through Koi, Koi Woods, you know? And that stupid Blastia had, like, kind of just went out of control. That was because of a stale. Oh, my God. I didn't even look at... I didn't even notice all the foreshadowing that the game was doing. That's interesting. I, it's like, this is my first time, like, actually just being aware of that. Judith was searching for Blastia that used a particular kind of formula. So, this special formula Estelle has must also consume massive amounts of air which causes the air crene to become more active and pump out more air than they should. I had hoped my hypothesis would have been wrong. Then I... It is as she has said. With each use of her power, the child of the full moon uses far more air than the Blastia. In so doing, the imbalance of air in this world is furthered. For the planet, such an existence can only be called a poison. So you just wipe it out then? Little quick to judge, aren't you, Pharaoh? Hold up, Yuri. Hold up, Yuri. <laughs> Hold up, Yuri. 
Hold up. Don't be saying that real quick. So you just wipe it out then? Don't don't be a hypocrite, Yuri. Don't be a hypocrite. This problem concerns the entire planet, and she is its cause. To do nothing would be unparalleled folly. Dead ass, Yuri. You should understand that. If the problem's <laughs> with Estelle, then it's for us to solve. That's right. We can't let anyone else handle it. So you just wipe it out? Oh, so you just kill Rago? So you just kill Qmore? <laughs> the gravity of this situation is beyond your grasp. See, Pharaoh couldn't clap back because he didn't know what Yuri did. You know, like, he doesn't follow these people. <laughs> but Pharaoh, if he knew about that, he probably would have he would have responded with like, what you talking about, bro? You should know more than anyone else. You don't honestly think that everything's going to be all sunshine and rainbows if Estelle dies, do you? It would at least eliminate one problem. Pharaoh, at Heliord I stopped myself, and again at Dawngrest I stopped you. What I thought was a Blastia turned out to be a human. Before I realized it, I had lost my way. Judith lost her way? I never thought this child could be as great a danger as you had said. And due to your confusion, I granted you the time necessary to see things as they are. As a result, my sister Belius is now lost to me. Enough. This power will bring only ruin. Hmm, not sure I understand all this, but if her power's the problem, why can't she just not use it? There can be no guarantee she will not try to use the power. <laughs> there can be no guarantee. That's true. She does have trouble turning a blind eye to things happening around her. Someday she will surely use her power to help someone. However, as long as she keeps that spirit of compassion, she cannot only be seen as harmful. She is not like Ablastia. I know that you can feel the difference. Compassion alone will not save this world. Listen, Pharaoh. I get that you've thought all this through with everybody's best interest in mind. But why doesn't that world have a place for Estelle? It is sometimes necessary to remove a part to save the whole. I don't buy that for a second. What makes you so high and mighty that you're the one to decide who gets cut and who doesn't? Yuri! Yo! Yuri! We have endured the anxiety <laughs> of existence for far greater a span than you can conceive. My man Yuri, I understand. He's probably just, you know, standing up for Estelle. Even though he knows he's probably being a hypocrite, a, hippo, a hypocritical claimus. You know, he's being a hypocritical, a critical, a hypocritical. And, uh, <laughs> my man dead ass killed two people. Who do you, why are you so high and mighty and get to choose who gets to live and dies? Like, uh, Yuri, uh, you are clearly uh, being a hypocritical such words mean <laughs> nothing from those who call this world home for but a fleeting moment but estelle's good I, that's the difference right estelle has compassion rago and kimor were just dickwads they were never gonna change you know i don't know pharaoh please listen the important thing is finding a way to stop the excessive air correct we still have time left to search for such a thing Judith and if if the effects of Estelle's power reach their absolute limit I will kill her as promised you should have no complaint with this hey Judith are you serious I'm sure brave Vesperia will come up with something before that happens right what I um yeah yeah of course we will Score one for Judith. So that settles it. If we humans are to blame for Estelle's problem and bringing on the apocalypse, then it's up to us to make things right. Your existence brings upon the apocalypse. And this is how Shin Megami Tensei 3 starts. So a lot of you guys don't realize this, but Tales of Vesperi has heavy connections to the Shin Megami Tensei universe. As you can just see, uh, as you just seen, Yuri actually said the word apocalypse and almost every smt game has the apocalypse happening so clearly 
This game is connected to Shin Megami Tensei just from the word apocalypse being used. <laughs> if we give it all we've got and still blow it, you can slow roast us on a grill for all I care. <laughs> you have changed. If you were still as before. Have I? That is nice to hear. Very well. Be ever mindful though that time is fleeting. Pharaoh ain't having it. Pharaoh is not having it. Wait! Wait! If the formulas are causing the excessive air, then there must have been times when this happened in the past. I mean, the Blastia were a product of an ancient civilization. Correct. There exist those who have inherited the sins of the past. If any yet can speak of what occurred in the days of old, it is they. We finally got to meet Feral after like... He's gone! 40 hours of gameplay. <laughs> bye bye Bye-bye. Patty, Patty is like dead-ass Luffy. Female Luffy. Um, I... Thanks for everything, Yuri. She's like, I don't know what's going on, but I'm ready to do what's right. <laughs> Judith, you too. No problem. But hey. What? It's okay if I have to die? What the hell was that? I'm sorry. I don't want to hear that again. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't want to hear that again, all right? Even though I was being a hippopotamus critical. A hippocritical. <laughs> Man, I was really worried there for a while. <laughs> Alright guys, I need y'all to count how many times I've said the word hippocritical. We were pretty lucky that bruiser was in a mood for conversation. Poor Raven's heart can't handle that sort of stuff anymore. You're pretty gutless for an old man. Jeez, Patty, you've really got nerves of steel. If he really wanted to kill Estelle, he'd have attacked us immediately. He ain't lying. And that's what I can't figure out. I imagine Pharaoh was conflicted as well. He hid himself from us in the desert to see just what we were made of. Huh. Maybe he wasn't as bad as we thought after all. You might be right. I get the feeling he'd do whatever's necessary when push comes to shove. That sounds like you. <laughs> For real. Maybe. But what are we going to do, Yuri? You heard what he said. We're going to fix the problems the air is causing. And that's all. That's easier said than done. We're pretty much at square one, you know. So Brave Vesperia are regulators, is what you're saying. Mm-hmm. And no one wants to be at square one. There's no doubt that the formulas are related somehow to the air getting used up. We need to find out about the ancient Blastia, and if they went berserk or not. If we had that kind of information, it might give us a clue. Ask those who have inherited the sins of the past about the days of old. Or at least that's what Pharaoh said. The Critia were the ones to invent the Blastia. In other words, we need to ask a Critian who is still familiar with the old stories. Yeah, the Critia are often credited as the inventors of the Blastia. There isn't much left of the Critian city of Timza, though. It'd be a lot easier if there were more cities. The hidden city of Miorzo. Miorzo? Yo, that sounds like a delicious ramen bowl. Yo, can I get some of that with some eggs in it? No, you're talking about a city. Oh, okay. It is far older than Temza, and the birthplace of the Kritya. The first Blastia mm. also originated there. Really? Well, what do you know? You wouldn't happen to know where this Mjorzo might be, would you, darling? Hmm. I've heard that name somewhere. There was a Kritian in Ospio. I'm sure they mentioned something about it. Do you think that person might still be there? Well, there's no harm in checking it out. Judith, are you coming with us? I should. We still have the issue of the guild to straighten out. So, to Ospio then. Ospio. 
We're going to Ospio! Money seems to disappear before you know it. No, it disappears because you use it. Sure, but if you only use a little at a time, you don't realize how much you're spending. I guess we've been spending a little too much. What do you mean? We need to spend more! Really? But why? The more gold we spend, the more it comes back to us. And it brings its friends, too. R really How interesting. Huh? Rita, your name's on this money. Exactly. I've been writing my name on our gold so we'll know when it comes back to us. Really? And when it does come back, I bet it'll have doubled at least. So go on, use it. <laughs> what a lovely little fairy tale. All right. The more you use it, the more you're going to lose it. But it'll come back, I promise. All right, we got boar fur, demon bone. Who's on this island? Who's trying to get boxed? Who's trying to box up, man? Y'all trying to box? Y'all trying to box? Let, let me get one fight in, you know what I'm saying? Let's play with Raven. What's the character we really haven't played? We've tried almost every character a little bit other than Carol. Carol literally has got no playtime for me. Let's play Raven. Let's have a good time! Shining Raising Black! Draconian Slash! Shouldn't you be using this a little more? Well, we said use your brain, dummy. He said he's not even gonna let you get the chance, stupid. Make it nice with the customers. Waiting tables is more fun than I thought it'd be. It is, isn't it? You can talk with all sorts of people and expand your perspective on the world, too. You almost be so smart. How come I'm the only one who gets yelled at for messing up <laughs> orders? Oh, that must be because they like you so much. Yeah, haven't you ever heard that the greatest hate springs from the greatest love? What sort of crappy love is that? Forgetting Carol for the moment. Why don't you ever wait tables, Yuri? Huh? It's annoying. I don't want to do it. Sounds like you just don't know the meaning of fun, kid. You turned down a chance to make nice with a bunch of cute female customers? Who wants to get friendly with an old pervert anyway? Um... You know, there's people out there in the world, you know, Rita, you know, that, 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 that dig that kind of stuff. So anyway... We're gonna go get that. We're gonna go around the world. We gotta go to Aspial. Another reason to go to Aspial. I love it. I, I think the last reason we're gonna need to go to Aspial is to pick up some items. Oh, oh yeah, I should have actually mentioned this. Off camera, I did go around the world going to older cities and towns, buying up armor and stuff that were available that I never picked up so I can add them to our item book. So we need to go to Aspio really quick and we need to go do some work. We need to go to Aspio and you know what the fastest way to get to Aspio is just to do this. Boom, I love that. Didn't even have to didn't even have to think, man. Didn't even have to think. Time for some chill music. It's been another long day. Let's save the manhunt for tomorrow. Uh, I second that. Oh, how long's it been since I've slept in a proper bed? Well, I suppose we can all stay at my place. Wait, there's something I want to take care of first. You mean me? Carol? This is a guild thing. Best for us not to get involved. I've thought about it a lot. What we should do, like, as a guild. And I realized, we have to figure out a few things if we're going to keep this guild going. It sounds like you've decided what we should do. Well, we said it before. The most important thing is obeying the guild's laws. All right, Carol speaking up. Those who break the laws suffer strict punishment, even if they're friends or family. They say that's the source of a guild's pride. Yes. So what I'm thinking is, we all have to receive punishment. What do you mean? 
I didn't know that Judith was fighting for our planet all on her own. But even though I didn't know, I still failed to help a fellow guild member. So I gotta accept my punishment. Yuri? Me? <laughs> Me? Maybe you were trying to follow your own path, but you still kept things hidden from us. There's no way that can be for the good of the guild. Well... So you gotta be punished too. <laughs> now he's stretching it. <laughs> the laws are important. What if someone does the right thing, but still breaks the law? Should they be punished? To be honest, I just don't know yet. So that's why we should all just accept our punishment and start over from scratch. What do you think? I can't promise I won't have my secrets in the future. Well, if that's the way it is, if you can't trust us, then there's nothing you can do. That would be my fault. And what if I destroy a Blastia that our guild was planning on using again? That would be breaking the law that says I should act in the interest of the guild. But you'd also be acting for the sake of the world. Guilds aren't there just so people can obey their laws. I think we can let that slide. Um, doesn't that sort of make your laws meaningless? <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of a guild like this before. <laughs> but you've got me interested, I'll give you that much. There's no need to be such a stickler for the rules. Gotta be more relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> Carol, you're just full of surprises. I had thought plenty about myself and what I should be doing. But I might not have considered how my actions would affect you guys. This is a way of settling things I didn't even realize existed. I... I just wanted to keep traveling with all of you. I just wanted each of our own paths to be the same as Brave Asperia's. <laughs> Sounds alright with me. You heard the man, Judy. I guess that's where we stand. You really are some of the oddest people I've ever met. But I suppose I can manage to put up with you. All right, then. One more time. Brave Vesperia, fall out! They're just making it up as they go, aren't they? <laughs> is that all a guild is? <laughs> the Don ran his guild just a teensy bit differently. <laughs> There's something beautiful about this way, though. Brave Vesperia sure is nice. Do you want to join too, Patty? Can't right now. Oh, yeah. You still have to get your memory back. So, what about the punishment? Oh, yeah. I almost forgot. Um... Looks like you guys are on Critian Researcher Detail. We'll be relaxing at my place. <laughs> Damn. Hey, why do you get to decide? Excuse me? Did I hear a complaint? <laughs> <laughs> no, ma'am. No. Uh-uh. Oh yeah, we got the chill music. Hold on. Yeah, I gotta do my little dance in my chair. Carol, were you thinking by yourself this whole time about what to do with Judy? Yeah, it was pretty much all I thought about after we left Nordopolica. That, and about what you did to Rago and Kumor. Really? It's nice to hear you thought about me that much, even when I wasn't around. Yeah, I wasn't sure at first what was right, what was wrong. I think I have the Dawn to thank for setting me straight. Without the Dawn's last words, I never would have found answers to the questions I had. You gotta stand on your own two feet. Yeah, I was thinking about what that meant. And before I knew it, I wasn't thinking about what was right. I was thinking about what I want to do. And that helped you decide what to do with the guild. Yeah. So here's to fresh starts. Yeah. To fresh starts. Fresh start? Okay. What? Oh, you said fresh starts, not press start. Okay. Why is this music so damn chilling? Do -do 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 -do. Actually, I need to see if they have anything new. No, they do not. I'm just gonna buy uh, one more of those, just in case they come up later in the game. Just have some extra stuff to synthesize, you know what I'm saying? So I did uh, synthesize a few of these attachments, as you can see. Before, there, there was a couple of these highlighted that um, we just never made before, but now I made them, and now that we have them, we, we are missing Monocle, Blue goggles visor, so 
three things we're missing right now from the attachments um, list to be able to make them and add them to the, you know, book of life, the book of collectors, the collector's book. So there's a lot of items I know we have to create via, you know, armor synthesis. Um, we haven't really made a rebirth doll. Look at all this other stuff I, <laughs> I gotta make. Let's tear it a little. Oh man, there's just so much I have to make when it comes to armor. We, we probably have access. I, we could probably get like 47% if I were to create all the armors and the helmets and stuff. Maybe. Alright. Alright, we're coming up on like the next part of the game too. Like, oh my god, there's so much more we need to do. It's, it's hard, you know, it's easy to get overwhelmed, but we're not gonna, we're not gonna let that happen to us. We're not gonna get overwhelmed. We're gonna take our time and take as much uh, time as possible to focus on small things, all right? So we're just gonna take our time, focus on one thing at a time. And right now we just need a voice, or not voice, but we need to just progress the game. I'm gonna rest at the end. All right, later, Logia. All right. So we got people leaving the stream chat, you know. It's a relaxing day out here. Your Bodhi Blastia has an interesting color. You must use your Bodhi Blastia quite a little bit since it has grown so much. Really? You know all the Blastia we excavate here were physically buried by Critia hands. What do you think it means? I think it means that they wanted to get rid of Blastia because they knew what the hell it was doing. And they buried it. All right, the operating rate of the blast has been very high. Air control is going well and research is proceeding smoothly. Put your hands in the air, air, air. All right, so we gotta go talk to everybody in the back. You guys have something nice, it's a special flag. Something special will happen if you use it. When I say special, I mean special. It is a miracle. You'll understand after reading the explanation and actually using it. So if I have somebody else, it's a miracle. Oh, let me read what it says. Maybe there's an extra function to the, uh, the flag. This flag that allows you to change party leaders in the menu. It don't give you an extra life. It really won't give you an extra life. <laughs> okay, I thought maybe he was like referencing, oh, if you use it in a battle. I don't know. I was think overthinking it. <laughs> that wasn't bad, Carol. I have to say, I really didn't expect to hear that again. Come to think of it, Judy doesn't ask about that at all. Oh, should I? Would it be a problem? Well, even if you don't ask, the answer is still clear to you. I'm not sure about that. Even so, you're still you and I'm still me. If our paths are the same, I'll travel with you. If I didn't think they were, I wouldn't be here. So everything is clear to you, see? I'm pretty sure what I'm thinking is clear to you as well. Is it something like, people who choose the same path think alike? <laughs> that was interesting. Going into Rita's hut, Pizza Hut, Rita's hut. I heard Critias are serious people. Do you think they'll tell us? I'd help, but I don't want to get in any trouble. <laughs> Take your time so I can get some rest. What's in this drawer? I need to know. Did you find it? Not yet. What are you waiting for? Yo, I was just coming to check in with y'all. Damn, Rita, chill. Why you always gotta yell? Shit makes me feel some type of way. Let me talk to this Critia. Oh my god, don't let it be this guy. Oh my god. Good day. <laughs> the one guy I ignored. 
The one guy I freaking ignored, dude. I'm so mad. Anyway, guys, what's up? So I was walking around town kind of lost because I was ignoring this guy because I don't like talking to guys in the games, you know what I'm saying? So, oh, uh, here we go. We found the Critian we were supposed to talk to, and I was lit. I was actually getting a bit salty. I was like, man, I know I got to talk to a Critian, but I thought it was a girl Critian I had to talk to. I'm just talking to other random people. Good day, my sister. Judith. I'm Tort. Tort and Judith. You wouldn't happen to know anything about Miorza, would you? I'd like to go there. I need to know where Miorzo is located and how I can get there. Even if you reach the city, there won't be anything for you to see there. But what do you plan on doing there anyway? Is not a Critian's interest in her own ancestral city reason enough to go? That is an acceptable reason, but I'm afraid I don't know anything about where it could be. I've heard your name before, Tort. You help guide those Critians remaining on Earth up to the heavens. Ooh. Will you not tell me because these humans are with me? Our ancient law states that we cannot show anyone but our brothers and sisters the way to Miorzo. Shouldn't it be a matter of whether they can be trusted rather than whether they're Critian or not? At the very least, these humans can be trusted. I shall ask once more, why do you seek Miorzo? The world is headed towards some bad things, all thanks to Blastia. We want to go to know what happened in the past and how we can stop it. We want to help everyone, not just the Critians. How's that? Very well. I do not know if you'll find the answers to your questions, but I will show you the way. I <laughs> show you the way. First of all, you'll need a special bell to open the path to Miorzo. A bell? Indeed. It is hidden in one of the southern caverns on the continent of Hippionia. Hippionia. Oh, Hippie. Hippionia. That's how you say it? You, you pronounce it Hippionia. So, Hip. Hippionia. But isn't Hippionia really big? Hippionia. The cavern is on a shore where <laughs> red flowers bloom. Huh? If you use that as your guide, I'm sure you shall find it. Was this in the. I don't remember this scene ever. Also. The door in the back of that cavern can only be opened by us Critians. What do you mean? Don't worry, I'll see that we're allowed to enter. And? What are we supposed to do with that bell? Relax. You humans are always so impatient. Shut up, Tort. Once you have the bell, you must travel to Egathor Forest. The Egathor Forest? Isn't that on Hippionia too? Hippionia. I've heard of it before. Hippionia. Yes. The sacred land of the Critians is located there. So that's where the door to Miorzo is. If you use the bell there, the door shall open. There is, however, a problem. A problem? Yes. Egathor Forest is being devastated by a mysterious group. Oh god. In addition to their overwhelming numbers, they also carry with them strange blastia. I cannot fathom their motives. But this is certainly a matter of great concern. So if we go to Miorzo, we have to do something about them? Exactly. We need you to restore peace to our sacred land. Gotcha. So we get that bell, beat the mysterious group senseless, ring the bell, and the door opens. Oh that sound God. right? He said ring the bell. Ring the bell ring a bell oh my god guys i get it the theme of the song is referencing getting to miords of the save the world oh my god ring a bell i will ring a bell yeah, come on guys guys it makes sense indeed i understand thank you may the road rise up to meet you sister and you as well let's go back to where everyone's waiting yeah i really don't remember that scene I thought that guy just gives you the bell or whatever. Did you find out anything? We've got a lead in a place called Egathor Forest. I'm pretty sure it's on the west side of Hippionia, to the south of here. So, Miorzo's in that forest? No, but a door is. Huh? A door? What do you mean? There's a door there that leads to Miorzo. We were told the bell that opens the door is hidden in a cavern on a shore in Hippionia, where red flowers bloom. 
I don't remember the red flowers. It'd be fastest to just go and check it out. First, let me rest. Perhaps we should get some rest before leaving? But... We don't really have a choice. All right, then I'm gonna walk around town and search for clues about the treasure. Hey, hold it, you should really... Jeez, she's gone already. Anyway, once we've gotten some rest, let's go look for that cavern in Hippionia. Hippionia. Reunite with Estelita and the Raven. So many people with R's in his, you know, in his group. Raven, Rita, repeat. Oh, Estelle, you look so cute. Really? I'm glad. I was worried these clothes wouldn't look good on me. They seem kind of old-fashioned. That's what makes them cute. Uh, I wasn't talking about myself. No, it's okay. I was just saying that the clothes are cute, not me. You don't need to be so modest. You're so cute. <laughs> okay. You are so cute. Ah, I know he know you, man. <laughs> you are so kawaii. Ah, I know he know you, man. Hey, what's going on with Patty? So, Patty, Flatty did you find Patty. any clues about the Maristella? Flatty Patty. Hmm, there were a lot of books, but none of them were about Eifried. Hey, guys, what do you call an angry Patty? A Krabby Patty. A Krabby Patty. Krabby Patty, because she's angry, and when you get angry, people consider that crabby. And she, her name's Patty. I'll, I'll delete my I'll, I'll delete my game now. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> Well, duh. This city only has books about Blastia. <laughs> Don't clip that. Don't clip that joke, please. Don't clip it. It's not worth clipping. Oh, well. Looks like I'm just gonna have to keep searching for clues with you guys. Did you just say Eifried? Did you just say Eifried? I just, I just couldn't help but overhear your entire conversation about Krabby Patties. Huh? Huh? Hey, you. You that girl they've been saying is Eifried's grandchild? Hmm. So, you neither admit nor deny it. And I guess it must be true. Interesting. So you're the grandchild of that bastard who disgraced the guilds. <laughs> you just look like a regular brat to me. Hmm. Why don't you say something? Can't even defend your own grandfather? Oh yeah, I guess that's something no one could ever defend, huh? Considering all the nasty stuff he did. How can you say such horrible things? How? Well, because it's the truth. Hey, wait. You guys must be Sirens Fang's newest guild members, right? Sirens Fang? W we're Brave Vesperia. Brave Vesperia? What a funny name. What kind of a guild is that? Damn, what an asshole. W well, it's, uh, you see. Why, you gonna give us some good jobs if we tell you? I don't have any jobs to give shady thugs involved with Eifried like you guys. Shady thugs. Brave Vesperia, huh? It's good for nothing trash like you who've been tarnishing what it means to be a guild. Bruh, what are you talking about? You don't even know us. You don't even know what we've been doing. You don't even know me and my life story. You need to shut up before you get your block knocked off, alright? You don't want your block knocked off. I recommend that you, um, stop speaking. You're the good-for-nothing trash who's been tarnishing the name of the city. Y you got him. You're Rita Mordio? Got him. Looks like there's a lot more vulgar pieces of trash than the last time I was here. Jeez, it'll be a real nuisance if anyone thinks I'm associated with you. Let's get out of here. Wait! Wait! Oh, was there something else you wanted to say? N no. Mm. You don't know me, my guy. But what are we gonna do? I'm pretty sure that guy's gonna spread rumors. I don't care. If that's the kind of thing that could destroy our guild, we would have been finished a long time ago. Yeah, we should just let people say what they're going to say. 
I... Wasn't our destination a shore in Hippionia where red flowers bloom? Ah, yeah. Then let's get going. Hippionia! <laughs> Patty, join the party. Order up, Carol. All right, time to serve up some orders. Serve up some orders? Uh, it's just that wearing this puts me in the mood to be serving customers. You know, those clothes make you look a little more macho than usual, kid. Really? <laughs> you think so? So, I guess that means Carol will be cooking dinner tonight. Wait, you were supposed to cook tonight, Raven? Hold on! I mean, hey! You heard the man, Carol. Got him. So, let's actually make sure we cook some food with Patty. Successfully cook some miso soup. All right, so we need to make sure we keep cooking with Patty. She's on her way to mastering miso soup. She actually needs to learn another recipe from miso soup. So we ha we want to keep cooking miso soup until we learn her new recipe, or until we master it in general, and then we'll work on whatever new recipe that we get. But we definitely want to keep cooking. We gotta keep cooking, 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 until we cook six hundred times so we can. Do a quest in Nordopolica, which is a new quest apparently. So right now, what I'm gonna do here, guys, before we go to Hipponia, Hippionia, we're gonna go ahead, save our game. Oh, I guess I gotta land first. We're gonna save our game, take a break, and once we come back, we're gonna be back with more Tales of Vesperia. We're gonna be checking out the the, uh, the the red flowers and I think I know where it is I, I know exactly where it is because I've noticed it on the map but I don't remember that actually being in the Xbox 360 version so that's got to be new content I'll see you guys on the next episode